listening to Pet Candy. You are listening to Pet Candy Magazine. This show is brought to you by Petsy. Get instant access to veterinary professionals when you need them. Download Petsy today. Welcome to the world of Pet Candy by Dr. Jill Lopez. In this issue, we get to know the most popular veterinarian on the planet, Dr. Evan Anton. If you haven't heard of this Kansas native, you definitely must be living under a rock. He's been profiled in GQ. He's a regular contributor to People magazine. He has a show on Animal Planet. Plus, he recently wrote a best-selling book, World Wild Vet. He's one of the few veterinarians that have reached celebrity status. Dr. Evan was a guest on our podcast show, Vet Candy IRL, with Shannon Gregoire, Tatiana Rogers, and Lexi Rodriguez. And I was fortunate enough to listen in to the conversation. That's when I learned all about his conversationist efforts. Whether it is a trip to Uganda to translocate giraffes to wildlife reserves or darting rhinos in South Africa in an effort to save them from poachers, Dr. Evan is simply amazing, and I truly enjoyed each second of his interview. Really happy to know there are people like Dr. Evan in our world. And if our feature on Dr. Evan leaves you wanting for more, then definitely check out his book for more. In this issue, we also have some great tips and fun ways to enjoy a healthier life, including some fun ways to cure your wanderlust. As always, I want to thank my assistant editor, Shannon Gregoire, who incidentally is entering her final year of veterinary school right now. I also want to thank our incredible writing team who made this issue possible. I hope you enjoy reading it as much as I have. Dr. Evan Anton is on a crusade to save our planet by A.M. Kuska. While most people may recognize the local vet who takes care of their pets, there are a few vets who are recognized outside their community. Dr. Evan Anton is one of them. He has more than a million followers on social media, where he shares his work with animals, ranging from baby rhinos to tiny puppies, and he is People Magazine's pet vet. He also has an Animal Planet show, where viewers watch him treat a large range of exotic animals. His work takes him all over the world, but when he's home, he works at the Conejo Valley Veterinary Hospital in Southern California. This amazing man is often referred to as one of the sexiest vets alive. He's even been the subject of a BuzzFeed article titled such, and he was given the title by People magazine. One look at his face is all you need to confirm how sexy he is. But there's more to Dr. Anton than just looks. His respect for animals and passion for wildlife are every bit as attractive as his appearance. How much he cares about animals is immediately evident when watching him work. In one episode of Evan Goes Wild, he must get deworming medication into an elephant. Elephants have a keen sense of smell, and though he wrapped the pills in attractive pill pockets made from grass, grains, and fruit, the elephant still knew which one had the medicine in it. Through patience, respect, and mutual trust, he was able to convince the pachyderm to eat the medication. This is just one example of his many patient and sweet moments with animals. Concerned about conservation. No vet would last long in the industry if they didn't care about animals. But Dr. Anton has a special spot in his heart for wildlife conservation. One of his saddest moments as a vet was going out to work with rhinos in South Africa. He came across a cow and her calf, both poached. The scene of the two lying side by side was devastating, and the poachers hadn't even bothered with the horns. Their lives were taken for no reason at all. More than anything else, 
Dr. Anton wants to draw attention to these animals and to other endangered species that could disappear if we turn our backs on them. They need help from loving, caring people who want their species to succeed. Talk with Dr. Anton for just a moment and you'll hear some of his many tales involving close encounters with aggressive species like hippos, as well as gentler moments with elephants. It's clear that he cares deeply about animals and has done a lot for many different species. While Dr. Anton continues to make us smile, and let's face it, to make our hearts throb, He's also working hard to make sure people understand how complex and beautiful animal life can be. While he spends much of his time with wildlife, he also has pets of his own and cares very much for domestic animals too. He has recently started a line of dog products called Happy Pet, safe and gentle products for everyday problems like hot spots and canine sunburn. Follow his journey on Instagram at Dr. Evan Anton. We'll be right back with more pet candy. Hi, this is Shay, and I want to tell you about my new show on pet candy, Cooking with Shay. I make vegan eating easy and fun. Check it out on Pet Candy TV. Ear Infections Explained Dr. Jill Lopez Otitis externa is the scientific name for an ear infection. Oti meaning ear, itis meaning infection, and externa meaning the outer part of the ear. Otitis externa is one of the most common medical problems in dogs, with an incidence rate estimated at 15 to 20 percent. What causes it? Otitis externa can be caused by several factors. Increased earwax production and thickening of the skin usually occur when the ear is inflamed. When this is combined with increased humidity and pH change, the ear becomes susceptible to bacterial and yeast infection. The ears appear inflamed and the skin can become thickened in response. If otitis externa is not treated, the inflammation will progress and become even more painful. The infection may spread to the middle ear and can result in hearing loss and neurological signs. How is it diagnosed? Otitis externa is diagnosed through a veterinarian's examination of the ear. The veterinarian will use a special instrument called an otoscope, which helps us to visualize the ear canal through magnification. The vet may also take samples of the ear discharge to determine if there is bacteria or yeast present. Sometimes a special test called a culture and sensitivity will be performed to determine the exact medication for treatment. How is it treated? Treating a case of otitis externa involves many steps. The first step is often a good cleaning of the ear. However, if the ear is very painful, the veterinarian may choose to control the pain first and clean later. There are several types of ear cleaning agents available. Most contain ingredients that dissolve and remove earwax. Ear medications may also be used to change the pH of the ear, making it a less comfortable living environment for the bacteria. Other treatments include corticosteroids, which help reduce inflammation and swelling, antibiotics for bacterial infections, and antifungal medications for yeast infections. Many times, the treatment involves topical drops or ointments that are applied to the ear. Sometimes, oral medication may also be given to your pet. This usually occurs in more severe infections. In rare cases of severe infection, the ear canals become thickened to the point that surgical intervention is required. This type of surgery removes part of the ear canal. It is highly unusual and is typically reserved for extreme cases. Early detection is key. 
screening test could improve lives of cats with heart disease. A new two-minute screening technique could help save cats from dying prematurely of heart disease. Morris Animal Foundation funded researchers at the Cumming School of Veterinary Medicine at Tufts University, who recently developed a focused cardiac ultrasound protocol for use by veterinarians in general practice to increase detection of cardiac issues in cats that aren't outwardly showing signs of disease. The team published their study in the Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine. Heart disease is one of the biggest killers of our cats. It's very common, but often undiagnosed, as many cats don't reveal symptoms, said Dr. Elizabeth Rosansky, veterinary researcher, clinician, and associate professor at Cumming School. This method is something small animal practitioners can add to their yearly physical exams as cats get older to catch heart disease earlier. Some studies indicate that up to 20% of cats die from heart disease every year. Many cats don't show any noticeable signs of distress until they are already in heart failure. Cats hide disease well and have evolved to hide illnesses and vulnerabilities to survive predation. They also usually live sedentary lifestyles that help hide signs of disease. Full echocardiograms can successfully detect heart problems, but they can be costly, require special training, and are usually reserved for cats already showing distress, often too late to make a difference. Dr. Rosansky proposed that an FCU, an abbreviated echocardiogram using equipment already available in a practice, could screen and determine if a cat should receive a more in-depth evaluation. FCUs already help detect hidden heart disease in human patients and require less instruction. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. How do you do it? How do I do what, Jess? How do you manage to do it all? What's your secret? How do you do it? I can't keep up. Oh, that's simple. I make things easy. Ashley, what? Come on, tell me the truth. Yes, Jess, I make things easy. I order everything online. Groceries, food, clothing, veterinarians. <laughs> what? <laughs> you order veterinarians online. Come on, girl, quit kidding me. Yes, Jess, I do. When I have a question or my pup isn't feeling well, I Petsy it. Petsy is a free app that lets me talk to a veterinary professional instantly and for only $20. No, are you serious? Only $20? Yes, and I love Petsy. I can talk to a veterinary professional 24-7. It really gives me a peace of mind knowing that Petsy's there when I need them. Wow, Ashley, you amaze me. I'm downloading Petsy today. So does that mean you're paying for lunch? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Veterinarians could be trained to specifically look for some easily measurable criteria of feline heart disease. Based on their findings, they could recommend further evaluation if cats met the criteria for heart disease as determined by the FCU. To test this, Dr. Rosansky's team taught 22 general practice veterinarians in the New England and Philadelphia areas to perform FCUs on about 300 cats. None of the practitioners had any prior formal cardiac ultrasound training. The cats were all at least one year old, and none had shown any clinical signs of heart disease. The veterinarians first performed standard physical examinations and electrocardiograms on each of their cats. Then they performed FCUs and were asked to indicate yes or no or equivocal as to whether they believed clinically significant heart disease was present. A board-certified cardiologist then evaluated each of the cats to confirm their status. Even with limited training, the veterinarians were 93% successful at diagnosing cats with moderate heart disease and 100% successful at diagnosing severe heart disease. 
Dr. Rosansky has already helped produce a video to teach veterinarians in general practice how to perform this technique. She also said the practitioners she trained are now using it on a regular basis. This appears to be a very feasible and useful tool for general practitioners to accurately identify cats that would benefit from going to see a cardiologist, said Dr. Janet Patterson Kane, Morris Animal Foundation's chief scientific officer. Early detection is so important, not only for cats, but for the owners who love them. Five Cool Places to Visit with Your Pet by Lauren Hodges. It's okay to admit you're obsessed with your dog. We're the same. There's nothing worse than going on an adventure and not being able to bring your dog with you. That's why we did hours of research to find places within the U.S. that are welcoming travel destinations for you and your furry friend. Five Best Places to Travel with Your Pet 1. Colorado Colorado is on the list for the dog-friendliest places in the U.S., filled with natural beauty and nature, making it the perfect place to bring your adventure-loving dog. Enjoy endless nature trails, hikes, and outdoor eating where your furry friend can be right by your side the entire time. 2. Texas Everything is bigger and better in Texas, right? That's the case with their hundreds of dog parks, nature parks, and walking trails, too. Austin, in particular, is a great place to travel if you and your doggy friend are looking for an adventure. With lots of dog-friendly hotels, restaurants, bars, and more, you and your dog can enjoy the entire day together in Texas. 3. Cannon Beach, Oregon Looking for a beach getaway that you can bring your furry best friend to? This is the place. With so many different welcoming hotels to choose from, you and your dog can run, swim, and lie on this pet-friendly beach all weekend. After you spend all day at the beach, head to Lucky Labrador Brewing Company in downtown Portland, a bar made for pets and their humans. 4. The Carolinas Known for being super pet-friendly, the Carolinas are a great place for your family and your pets to travel. Whether you're doing a weekend getaway or a week-long trip, your pooch can enjoy the beach in the mornings and nights, and they can also tag along as you enjoy some of the best restaurants, breweries, and bars in town. 5. Acadia National Park, Maine if you and your four-legged friend love a good hike, you have to try this place. There are hundreds of trails you can walk here, ranging from beginner to expert. Enjoy the beauty of nature and walk alongside the water while your canine companion smells every stick, leaf, and patch of grass. Get to traveling. Whether you're looking to get away for a weekend or to have the adventure of a lifetime, these places are some of the top U.S. destinations for travel with your dog. Now, we know traveling to these places may be a bit of a hike, but pick the one closest to you and enjoy your road trip with your canine bestie. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. Hey, pet parents, check out the Renee Michelle Show exclusively on Pet Candy. Join Renee Michelle to talk about life, love, and everything in between. Check it out at mypetcandy.com. Why some friends make you feel more supported than others. It's good to have friends and family to back you up when you need it. But it's even better if your supporters are close with each other, a new set of studies suggests. Researchers found that people perceived more support from a group of friends or family who all knew and liked each other than from an identical number of close relationships that were not linked. The results suggest that having a network of people to lean on is only part of what makes social support so beneficial to us, says David Lee 
who led the study as a postdoctoral fellow in psychology at Ohio State University. The more cohesive, the more dense this network you have, the more you feel you can rely on them for support, says Lee, who is now an assistant professor of communication at the University at Buffalo. It matters if your friends can depend on each other, just like you depend on them. Lee conducted the study with Joseph Bayer, assistant professor of communication, and Jonathan Stahl, graduate student in psychology, both at Ohio State. Their research was published online recently in the journal Social Psychology Quarterly. The researchers conducted two online studies. In one study, 339 people were asked to list eight people in their lives that they could go to for support in the last six months. Participants rated on a scale of one to seven how much support they received from each person. Most were listed as friends or family members, but some people also named coworkers, romantic partners, classmates, or roommates. Crucially for this study, participants were also asked to rate on a scale of one to seven how close each possible pair of their eight supporters were to each other, from they don't know each other to extremely close. Based on those answers, the researchers calculated the density of each participant's network. The closer and more interconnected their friends and family were to each other, the denser the network. Results show that the denser the networks, the more support that participants said they would be able to receive from them. We found that our support networks are more than the sum of their parts, said Bayer, who is a core faculty of Ohio State's Translational Data Analytics Institute. People who feel that they have more social support in their lives may be focusing more on the collective support they feel from being part of a strong, cohesive group. It's having a real crew as opposed to just having a set of friends. A second study involving 240 people examined whether the density of a social network mattered in a specific situation where people needed help. In this case, participants were asked to list two different groups of four people they could go to if they needed support. One group comprised four people who were not close to one another, and the other group consisted of four people who were close with each other. Participants were then asked to imagine a scenario in which their house had been broken into and they went to their network for support. Half the people were told to think about going to the four people that were not close to one another, while the other half imagined reaching out to their four connected supporters. Results show that those who imagined going to their tight-knit group of friends or family perceived that they would receive more support than did participants who thought about going to their unconnected friends. The results also offered preliminary evidence of two psychological mechanisms that could help explain why people feel better supported by a tight-knit group of friends. In answers to survey questions, participants suggested that they thought of their group of close friends or family as one entity they also were more likely to see a closer-knit group as part of their own identities. Both of these factors were related to perceiving more support, results showed. The researchers said the results of both studies show it isn't just the number of friends and family you have in your network that is important. You can have two friends who are both very supportive of you, but if they are both friends with each other, that makes you feel even more supported. Stahl said. On a practical level, that means it is important which friends we think about when we most need help or when we are feeling lonely in the midst of daily life. Focus on those friends who are connected to each other, Bayer said. That's where we really perceive the most support. New Puppy? Put these four things on your to-do list by Shannon Gregoire. So, you want a new puppy, or maybe you've just adopted one. What are your next steps? I have outlined a few key tactics to set you and your new pup up for success. One, shopping list. Do you have all the items to welcome your new pup into your home? Items such as a collar, leash, food and water bowls, poop bags, dog tag, 
food with storage container, a bed, and toys? These are all essential items to make sure you and your pup are off to a good start. Two, vet appointment. The first thing you always want to do with a new puppy or pet is to bring them in for a consult with your vet. This allows you to begin a medical history and start out with a clean bill of health. Also, it is important to talk to your vet about a microchip, vaccines, and preventatives like flea, tick, and heartworm medications. Bring questions with you about food toys, what to expect, and whatever else you are wondering about. Your vet is the most reliable source of information for your pet, and we love congratulating you on your new family member. 3. Quality Time Bonding with your pet early on is important to build trust and a healthy relationship for years to come. It allows you to learn their personality, how they like to play, as well as starting a feeding and bathroom schedule. You are also guaranteed to get tons of adorable photos and videos during your quality time. 4. Essential Puppy Services Are you thinking about getting pet insurance? Maybe looking into a dog trainer? What about a groomer or daycare? These are important services to consider. There is no right answer, so be sure to do your homework and decide what will fit best for you and your pup. <laughs> We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. If you love your pet as much as I do, you need Petsy. It's a free app that you can download in the App Store, and it is amazing. For only $20, you can talk or video chat with a veterinary professional immediately, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. When you have questions about your pet's health, just Petsy it. Download the app today. Simple Ways to Pamper Your Pet by A.M. Kuska Everybody loves a spa day, even your dog or cat. Our pets take such good care of us when we need them, but sometimes we neglect to show them the same kind of affection. Treating your pet to a spa day or even doing something small to pamper them will remind them that you love them just as much as they love you. Throw them a party. Yes. I mean this literally. Throw your dog a pet party. There doesn't have to be a reason. It doesn't have to be their birthday. Planning a little get-together with all your pet's pals will give them some time to just be the animal that they are. They can enjoy time playing with their friends, running around, having fun. You could even decorate and take photos. Or if it is their birthday, get them a pet-approved cake. Even your antisocial cat will appreciate that. Purchase a massage for them. Any animal that has muscles is capable of developing knots and experiencing aches and pains. A pet massage is a great way to pamper your pet for an hour or so. This will help ease their muscle pain, relax their bodies and minds, and just make them feel better overall. They'll feel like a new pup or cat. Just please do not do this yourself. Dogs and cats are extremely sensitive. If you're trying to provide them with a healing massage, you need to schedule an appointment with a trained pet massage therapist. Check out a pet treat bakery. There are more of these around than you would think. Every pet deserves a delectable treat every once in a while, but it should be a treat that was made specifically for them, not for you. Take them to a pet treat bakery on a leash or in a carrier and let them have a look and a sniff around the place. They'll tell you which treat appeals to them. You can take it to go or they can eat it there in the bakery. They'll love this little adventure. Schedule a getaway. If you want to go all out, you could schedule an overnight trip to a resort that is not only pet friendly, but actually designed for pets and their owners. These resorts often have pools and indoor and outdoor play areas that are all designed for your pets. This will give you and your furry friend a chance to spend some quality time together and make some new friends. Every pet deserves to be pampered from time to time. 
treat them to their own spa day with a massage, or let them pick out their own specialty treats and cookies at a bakery. They will come to love new adventures, and with you by their side, they're sure to leave feeling relaxed and loved. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. Hi everyone, Dr. Hunter Finn here. You might have seen me on TikTok or Instagram at Dr. Hunter Finn. I want to tell you about my new podcast, The Dr. Hunter Finn Show on Pet Candy. This show is about things that interest me, bringing the most interesting news and events to you, and talking to really interesting and inspiring people who are trying to make this world a better place. Check me out on iTunes or a podcast platform of your choice. Should You Foster a Pet? by Shannon Gregoire. Have you ever considered fostering a pet? Maybe you are unsure if adoption is right for you at this time. Maybe your living situation is changing frequently. Here are a couple of my top issues to think about when applying to be a foster parent. The biggest thing to consider would be the species and size you want to foster. Are you looking for a cat or a dog, or even an exotic species? Are you looking for a puppy or kitten, an adult, or an older animal? What size pet are you looking for, small, medium, or large? What personality or breed types would fit into your home and lifestyle so that you could care for them the best? These are all crucial considerations because a fosterer who lives in a third floor, one bedroom apartment will have very different answers from someone with a huge fenced backyard and a house. Another big consideration is how attached you might get to this foster. Does that mean you are looking to adopt? What does that look like financially? Are you willing to take on healthcare costs, food toys, and other financial obligations? Are you prepared to have them for the next 5, 10, even 15 years? It is very possible that you will foster and create an amazing bond with the animal who is sharing your home. But if you decide to adopt, make sure you are prepared to provide the needed care for the animal's lifetime. The next consideration is lifestyle impacts of having a foster pet. Some pets, like cats and some reptiles, are relatively low maintenance, but dogs require a greater time commitment. Are you looking to foster a small dog who can walk with you to get coffee in the mornings and is easy to transport? Or are you looking for a bigger dog that you would be able to hike with and who takes up more space? Another consideration is immune status and existing animals in the home. If you are fostering an animal being rescued from overseas, you should consider the possibility that it might carry a zoonotic disease, one that is transmissible to humans. That said, usually only immunocompromised individuals would be affected, but very young children, the elderly, and pregnant women should also proceed with caution. Most shelters have a lot of local animals who offer less risk, Shelters and rescue organizations do their best to mitigate disease risk and treat the pets, but it is still a risk. Fostering animals is truly a rewarding experience. Even though you don't become their forever home, you have the chance to positively impact their lives and provide a loving home until they find their person. As with any animal decision, it is a huge responsibility to care for a life other than your own. So make sure that inviting an animal into your home is right for you and the animal. Time for a pet venture by A.M. Kuska. COVID-19 has kept most of us cooped up for an extended period of time. It's only natural that we look forward to a more positive future and many of us dream of summer days that open up more outdoor activities. If you're pining away for an outdoor adventure, imagine how your dog must feel. They spend all their lives waiting for you to come home, and they did it long before COVID ever started. Luckily, it's easy to take your dog on an outdoor adventure. 
Here are five pet-friendly things you can do with your pooch. Go to the beach. Even if you live in a landlocked state, there are probably plenty of lake shores and riversides beckoning you and your pet. Many of them are pet-friendly, and some areas even have off-leash dog parks that feature a stretch of shore. There are usually pet-friendly hotels and rentals near these parks, so take advantage of this and bring your dog with you. Camping Many dogs love to go on camping trips, and most campgrounds welcome pets. Camping takes a bit more preparation than a day trip, however, and your dog will need some preparations too. His vaccines should be up to date, flea and tick preventatives in place, and tags on his collar in case he gets lost. A light for his collar is also a common sense addition, and bring a doggy first aid kit just in case. Hiking. If you don't have time for a drive out to a lake or ocean, but you still want to get out and experience nature, a hike may be the perfect compromise. Most hiking trails are dog friendly, as long as the dog is leashed and dog waste is picked up and packed out. Hiking is a wonderful way to spend time with your dog, see some amazing views, and get some exercise too. Take your dog to a ball game. Believe it or not, almost every baseball stadium has a dog day. On that day, you're welcome to bring your well-mannered and leashed dog to the game with you. These games are often surprisingly fun, and they usually have swag and dog vendors as well as the game itself. Your dog will probably love the change of scenery and the hot dogs, and you'll get to watch a game live with your best friend. Take your dog on a tour of the city or state. Spend a few minutes on Bring Fido and you'll quickly discover just how many parks, restaurants, and even historical sites are dog-friendly. If you've been itching to get out but don't really know where to go, why not build a tour around your dog? Start out by visiting a park, then move on to a dog-friendly off-leash area. Break for lunch at a dog-friendly restaurant and then get some knowledge at a dog-friendly museum or historical site. Summer adventures are great fun. This year, take your dog and make some wonderful memories together. You'll both love it. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. Pet Candy Radio delivers world-class content with engaging voices and inspirational messages curated by a network of top influencers and experts. Stream 24-7 at MyPetCandy.com. Yoga shown to improve anxiety study shows. Yoga reduces symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder, a condition characterized by chronic nervousness and worry suggesting the popular practice may be helpful in treating anxiety in some people. Led by researchers at NYU Grossman School of Medicine, a new study found that yoga was significantly more effective for generalized anxiety disorder than standard education on stress management, but not effective as cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT the gold standard form of structured talk therapy that helps patients identify negative thinking for better responses to challenges. For the study published online on August 12, 2020 in JAMA Psychiatry, 226 men and women with generalized anxiety disorder were randomly assigned to three groups, CBT, Kundalini Yoga, or Stress Management Education a standardized control technique. After three months, both CBT and yoga were found to be significantly more effective for anxiety than stress management. Specifically, 54% of those who practiced yoga met response criteria for meaningfully improved symptoms compared to 33% in the stress education group. Of those treated with CBT, 71% met the symptom improvement criteria. However, after six months of follow-up, 
the CBT response remained significantly better than stress education, the control therapy, while yoga was no longer significantly better, suggesting that CBT may have more robust, longer-lasting, anxiety-reducing effects. Can yoga help treat anxiety? According to researchers, generalized anxiety disorder is a common, impairing, and undertreated condition, currently affecting an estimated 6.8 million Americans. While most people feel anxious from time to time, it is considered a disorder when worrying becomes excessive and interferes with day-to-day -day life. CBT is considered the gold standard first-line treatment. Medications, including antidepressants and sometimes benzodiazepines, may also be used. Not everyone, however, is willing to take medication, which can have adverse side effects, and there are challenges with accessing CBT for many, including lack of access to trained therapies and long wait lists. Many people already see complementary and alternative interventions including yoga, to treat anxiety, says Dr. Naomi Simon, lead author of the NYU study. This study suggests that at least short-term, there is significant value for people with generalized anxiety disorder to give yoga a try to see if it works for them. This study suggests that at least short-term, there is significant value for people with generalized anxiety disorder to give yoga a try to see if it works for them. Yoga is well-tolerated, easily accessible, and has a number of health benefits. According to Dr. Simon, future research should aim to understand who is most likely to benefit from yoga for generalized anxiety disorder to help providers give better, more personalized treatment recommendations. We need more options to treat anxiety because different people will respond to different interventions, and having more options can help overcome barriers to care, she says. Having a range of effective treatments can increase the likelihood people with anxiety will be willing to engage in evidence-based care. Thank you for listening to Pet Candy Magazine. To stay up to date on everything pets, Follow us at mypetcandy.com. It's Pet Candy. Pet Candy. Pet Candy. It's Pet Candy Radio. Pet Candy.